Second item on the agenda is roll call. Please acknowledge when I call your name. Mr. Hector Lyle, Vice President. Present. Oscar Medrano, Secretary. Present. Angel Mendes, Trustee. Present. Ana Cruz, Trustee. Present. Fatima Huerta, Trustee. Present. Ileana Gonzalez, Trustee. Present. Antonio G. Limon, Superintendent. Present. And Mr. Tony Torres, Attorney. Present. Moved to item uh, Pledge of Allegiance and Invocation. We do have two guests or one guest to represent. And Ms. Medrano. Uh, today we have Patsy Alejandro. She represents Dr. C.M. Cash Elementary. Let me tell you a, li a little bit about Patsy. Ms. Patsy Alejandro is a 10-year-old gifted and talented student at Dr. Clarence McCallum Cash Elementary. She likes to sing and dance and has done tumbling at, at Pulse Athletics. She has participated in several school activities such as, but not limited to jump rope for heart, chess, dance team, marathon kids, safety ranger, honor choir performances, collection and delivery of canned goods to needy families, and the San Benito Food Pantry. Her favorite subject as a fifth grader is reading. An accomplishment Patsy achieved this year is that of being a member of the AR Millionaire Club. She amassed a total of 169 points with 1,053,000 321 words read. Patsy has passed every star test without any form of difficulty. She has also been on the school's honor roll list numerous times and has received the principal's award for straight A's throughout her elementary school life. Given her study habits, good grades, and great parental support, Patsy plans to attend Yale University and become a pediatrician and give back to our community. Patsy lives with her parents, Manuel and Patricia Alejandro, and her brother, Manuel. Patsy would like to thank the school board members, Mr. Limon and Dr. C.M. Cash Elementary for affording her the best elementary school life experience. Patsy. We could have everybody stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stay standing for the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Father, we give you thanks, praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for everyone gathered here now. We pray, we pray for guidance for our school board members in the matters at hand and ask that you would clearly show them how to conduct their work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. Help them to work together and encourage each other to excellence for the advancement of San Benito CISD. We ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I could have the uh, the parent of Ms. Alejandro stand up, please. <laughs> we thank you for the support you show your child, and for you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Good job. Good job. Move to item number five: special recognitions. Ms. Longoria. We have several schools on the agenda this evening, several groups coming before the board for recognition. So we'd like to start by recognizing the first group that is on that list. We have some very special guests with us this afternoon joining us. They are members of the Special Olympics track and field, and these are students that went off to compete and earn state medals. And let me start by introducing them and see what kind of accomplishments they achieved. First of all, please help me welcome Rafael Constante. And we have Ms. Ileana Gonzalez doing the honors for the students this evening. Rafael Constante participated in the 500 meter run and earned a bronze. 
standing long jump, silver in that particular competition. The other student, Juan or JD Delgado, participated in the 50 meter run and placed fifth, and in the softball throw, placed fourth. We have Mario Garcia, 50 meter run, participation and softball throw, where he earned a gold. <laughs> Miguel Gonzalez participated in the 25 meter motorized wheelchair obstacle, and he received a gold, and in the softball throw, earned a fifth place finish. Please help me welcome Alexandria Hernandez. She participated in the 25 meter motorized wheelchair obstacle and earned a gold. <laughs> and also in the softball throw, and she earned a gold as well. <laughs> Josue Hernandez participated in the 50 meter run and placed fifth, and in the softball throw, earned a gold. <laughs> Next, we have Cassandra Jimenez, 200 meter run participant and placed fourth in the softball throw, also placed fourth. <laughs> Our next honoree this evening is Maria Guadalupe Martinez, participated in the 50 meter run and earned a silver and in the softball throw, earned a bronze. The students that I just called right now are all students from San Benito High School. We have one student from Veterans Memorial Academy, Mark Medrano, 50 meter walk. And he earned a silver, and in the softball throw, he earned a bronze. We have another student from San Benito High School, Adriana Ramirez, participated in the 50 meter walk and earned a gold. And she also earned a bronze with a softball throw competition. Miranda Reina from VMA also participated with the group. And this participant took part in the 50 meter walk and earned a bronze and in the softball throw placed fifth. Student from San Benito High School, Angelica Romero, participated in the 50 meter walk and softball throw, where they earned a fifth place finish. <laughs> Amanda Sierra participated in the 50 meter walk and earned a silver, and in the softball throw, earned a bronze. <laughs> and Amanda is a student at Veterans Memorial Academy. The next honoree on the list is Greg Vargas. He participated in the 50 meter run and earned a gold. Standing long jump, earned a bronze. And he's also a student at San Benito High School. We also have the Special Olympics coordinator, Mr. Rick Tamez. And we would also like to acknowledge the coaches, Davis Edsel, Cindy Garrett, Cindy Puente, Monica Ibarra, Gabriel Gonzalez, Jesus Rodriguez, Melissa Lesinais, and Edward Reza. And these are the students that went to compete at the Special Olympic Track and Field Competition that was held on May 23rd through the 25th at Arlington, Texas. And this was at the Summer State Games. And these student athletes participated and awarded all these medals at this state event. So congratulations to the students. And I'd also like to acknowledge the principals from Veterans Memorial Academy, Mr. Gilbert Galvan, and San Benito High School, Henry Sanchez. And also, most importantly, the parents that are in the audience of these fine students, please stand and be recognized at this time.
Great job, students and coaches. Thank you so much for representing San Benito at the games. Mr. Hector Leal will do the honors next. I'd like to introduce a student from San Benito Veterans Memorial Academy, and this is Nadia Moreno. She was a freshman this school year at VMA. There she is. She is the first female to advance to state competition. And this is uh, in the school's history. She earned a Division I rating in guitar solo competition. She received an opportunity to advance at state competition where she competed at the University of Texas at Austin in May. So congratulations to Nadia Moreno. <laughs> she works closely under guitar instructor, Mr. Jorge Mascorro. And principal at that campus is Mr. Gilbert Galvan. And her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Moreno, are in the audience if they can stand and be recognized at this time. Congratulations, Nadia, on making history. Next, I'm gonna turn it over to Luis Gonzalez from the Parental Involvement Department, and he is here to introduce all of our chess winners. We have several schools being represented. And uh, I'd like to welcome him, and he will take over from this point on. Thank you all so much. <clears throat> okay, good evening, uh, Mr. Limon, Mrs. Sanchez, and members of the Board of Trustees. What we'll do is we're going to present uh, by school all the awards and the students who have contributed to our award-winning chess program for this year. So we're going to start with Dr. C.M. Cash. Dr. C.M. Cash, Mighty Pump, Mighty Pups. Chess team attended various tournaments and massed numerous individual and team recognitions for the following tournaments. The students who are comprised of the Dr. Cash team include Caitlin McNutt, uh, Brenna uh, Salinas, Aiden Quintanilla, Ivan Devival Castillo, Ricardo Gonzalez, Camila Ortega, Brianna Salinas, Anthony Vasquez, Israel Verial, Desiree Barrientes, Nicholas Garcia, Andrea Hernandez, Javier Sosa, Denora Olguin, Lorena Segura, Ruben Reza, Orises, uh, I'm sorry, Orises Salinas, Matthew Isaire, Gabriel Soria, Rihanna Lopez, um, Misael Reina, Lindsay Montemayor, Marcus Suarez, William McNutt, Samuel es Escribano, Diana Perla Leja, Jose Perez, Jasmine Vasquez, Ryan Gonzalez, Jacob Partida, Isaac Quintanilla, Samuel Sosa, Kelly Parientes, Samuel Eloy Garcia, De Dianara Olguin, Alan Ortiz, Omar Salinas and Angelica Vasquez. The following accomplishments were um, attributed to the Dr. Cash uh, chess team. At the Russell Elementary Tournament, the K-1 division placed 12th, and the K-3 division under 600 was seventh place. The K-5 under 100 was 17th place. The K-12 division was under 100, and that was sixth place at the Russell Elementary Tournament. At the Miller Jordan Middle School Tournament, the Dr. Cash K-1 team was placed second, K-3 first place, and K-5 through 6 first place. At the Ed Downs Elementary Tournament, the K-1 team placed third. At the Hannah, Homer Hanna High School Tournament in Bronzeville, the K-1 uh, team tied for ninth place. K-3 under 600 was first place and the K-5 under, under 1,000 was first place as well. At the regional uh, championship tournament in Bronzeville, Texas, the K-1 division tied for ninth. The K-3 under 700 was 17th place. The K-3 championship team was 11th place. The K-5 under 800 was 37th place, and the K-5 through 6 championship team tied for sixth place. At the Stell Elementary Tournament in Bronzeville, the K-1 division uh, placed 13th. K-3rd, under 600, was tied for third. 
The K-5 through 6 placed third as well. At the National Chess Tournament held in Dallas, Texas this past month, the K-3 division placed 26 nationally, K-5 under 900 tied for 17th place, and the K-5 championship team tied for 30th place at the National Chess Tournament in Dallas, Texas. So congratulations to the CM Cash Elementary Chess Team. At this, at this time, we'd like to acknowledge the chess coaches. That is Antonio Espino, is the chess coach from Dr. Cash. Chess sponsors include Dorothy Barrera and Beverly Salinas. And the principal of Dr. CM Cash is Lupita Monsevayas. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dr. Cash chess team. <clears throat> at this time, at this time, if the parents from the Dr. Cash chess team can please stand to be recognized. And thank you, parents, for all your support for this year. <clears throat> the next team to be recognized will be the La Encantada Elementary Chess Team. Their accomplishments at their 2014 regional, Region 8 Chess Championships included, and I'll named the students who participated in that school. The students include Ezequiel Hernandez, Damian Olivares, Antonio Lambert, Emanuel Diaz, Jason Gonzalez, Davian Garza, Nicholas Jimenez, Victoria Marin, Gardiel Garcia, Crystal Delgado, Joshua Richmond, Angel Flores, Eli Ol Olorcia, Isaac Reyes, and George Delgado, and Valerie Olivares. The team sponsor and the team coach is Manny Gonzalez. The after school program coordinator for La Cadal Elementary is Fidel uh, Gonzalez Jr. The awards that were awarded to them at the regional chess tournament include primary JV, seventh place, elementary JV, 22nd place, and elementary championship, 23rd place. The principal at La Cadal Elementary is Gracie Martinez, and we congratulate La Cadal chess team. At this time, we also would like to acknowledge the parents from La Cantada Chess Team students. Thank you. The next team to be recognized for their chess accomplishments for this year is Landrum Elementary Chess Team. The students who comprise the Landrum Elementary Chess Team include Rene Paz, Ryan Cavazos, Kayla Rios, Daniela Hernandez, Sean Rodriguez, Sebastian Cano, Marcelo Nino, Jonathan Gonzalez, Ashton Rodriguez, Kevin Cruz, and Gavin Mendoza. The chess coach for Landrum Elementary is Michael Galvan. The after school coordinator is Mr. Albert Sanchez. And the principal at Landrum Elementary is Ms. Aurora Mendoza. This is the Landrum Elementary chess team. Right. At this time, we can have the parents stand to be acknowledged for the students from Landrum uh, chess team. Thank you, Landrum. The next school to be uh, recognized tonight will be the La Paloma Elementary Regional Region 8 Chess Championship Team. The students who comprise the La Paloma Elementary Chess Team include Sam Wisdom Soak, Aaron Arriata, Alan Cano, Leonides Estrada, Sam Paul Soak, Melissa Arriata, Artim Artimo, Colasso Jr., Samuel L. M. Galt, Gabriel Rangel Jr., Alian Vasquez, and Lionel J. Zuniga. The chess coach at La Paloma Elementary is Manuel L. Gonzalez. The after school program coordinator is Lisa M. Gonzalez. And the principal at La Paloma Elementary is Ms. Libby Flores. This is the La Paloma Elementary accomplishments for this year. 
they include at the regional chess tournament, the K first grade division was a ninth place team and received a trophy for their accomplishments. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the La Paloma Elementary chess team. At this time, we can have the parents uh, who stand to be recognized for the accomplishments of the La Paloma Elementary chess team. <clears throat> Thank you. The next school to be recognized in our schools will be Rangerville Elementary chess team. The students of Rangerville primary division team consist of Ricky Henderson, Angel Flores, Jared Roselli, Orlando Chari, uh, Charias, Christopher Charias, Jesus Garcia, Ivan Garza Jr., Caleb Hernandez, Christian R. Martinez, Rafael Montes, Gina Torres, Luis A. Flores, Andrew Herna uh, Henderson. This is the primary division team, and also included in there is uh, Edward Martinez, Amanda Montalvo, Catarino Reina Botoya, Andrew Silva. This is the primary division. The elementary division students comprise of Georgina Allen Ari Ariano, Joshua Garcia, Mark Sauceda, Kirsch Kirsha uh, Ch Charias, Aiden Garcia, Calista Hernandez, Ingrid Munoz, and Nicholas Rob Robles. The um, after school side coordinator at Rangerville Elementary is Janie Flores, and the principal is Ms. Linda Molina. The accomplishments of the team include the primary division won uh, third place at three tournaments for this year. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to uh, acknowledge the range accomplishments of Rangerville Elementary. At this time, we have the parents stand to be acknowledged for the, for the students from Rangerville Elementary. Thank you. The next school to be recognized from our chess program is the San Miguel CISD Riverside Middle School Chess Team. The members of the team include Michael Thomas, Fabian Olivares, Aaron Saldana, Robert Torres, Mauricio Diaz, I, Ian Anthony Reyes, Osiel Peña, Juan Lambert, Edric Garza, Joseph Garza, Vin, Vin, Vinanicio Flores, Noe Mendez, Thomas Diaz, Juan Jimenez, J, and Jason Noah Martel, and Gerardo Rodriguez. The chess coach at uh, Riverside Middle School is Mr. Manuel Gonzalez. The after school site coordinator is Ms. Cynthia Reisted, and the principal is Mr. Joel Wood. The accomplishments of the Riverside Middle School chess team include competing at the regional uh, chess tournament in the six through nine section, and they play six in the region this year. Uh, excuse me, fifth in the region this year that was held at uh, Brownsville. So at this time, we'd like to congratulate the accomplishments of Riverside Middle School's chess team. <clears throat> at this time, we'd like for the parents to stand to be recognized for these fine students from Riverside Middle School. Thank you. Our final team to be recognized for tonight will be the Veterans Memorial Academy chess team, and there's two separate divisions that competed this year at the regional chess tournament. The members of the team include Brandon Vasquez, Juan D. Corona, Delilah Davila, Hermundo Maldez, and Jasper Aguilar. These group of students competed at the regional chess tournament in Brownsville, and their division was the high school JV division, which they placed fourth. The uh, after school coordinator at Veterans Memorial Academy is Albert Farias. The chess instructor is Robert Miramontes. And the principal is Gilbert Galvan. This is the JV uh, team accomplishments, uh, fourth place at regionals for Veterans Memorial Academy. Thank you. Can
the next team to be recognized for Veterans Memorial Academy. Also competed at the Regional Chess Championship Tournament, but they competed in the Championship Division, and they were in the top 10 at Regionals, and they include team members Juan C. Sosa, Ernesto Quintanilla Jr., Jonah Barrera, Nathaniel Naranjo, and James Gutierrez. They placed 10th at the Regional Chess Tournament this year. Congratulations, Veterans Memorial Academy's Championship Division. The after school side coordinator is Mr. Albert Farias, chess instructor Roberto Miramontes, and principal Mr. Gilbert Galvan. We'd like to thank all these students and all these teams who have contributed to our award winning chess program for this year. Thank you. Congratulations again to the uh, parents and the students, and no doubt that the best talent comes from San Benito, and there's proof of it right there in front of you. Move, item to, move to item number six, superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. President. At this time, I would like to inform the board of the overnight trips that have been scheduled. We have the high school FFA state competition that's scheduled for Clifton, Texas, June the 6th through the 10th. High school TSTC education talent search at TSTC Harlingen University of San Antonio, Texas, June 10th and the 11th. BMA National Junior ROTC Basic Leadership Training at Texas A&M Kingsville, June 9th through the 14th. BMA National Junior ROTC Leadership Academy, Texas A&M Kingsville, also June the 16th through the 21st. The high school, the VMA FFA Area 10 Leadership Competition in Lagarto, Texas, June 20th through the 22nd. The high school AV Production Skills USA Computer Maintenance in Kansas City, Missouri, June the 22nd through the 28th. We also have a presentation on our star results, and at this time I would ask Mr. Ruben Franco to come forward and to share that with the board. Hello, good evening. Uh, I left a packet um, in front of you uh, that we're going to be following this, this evening. Uh, please, um, please note that I didn't, uh, number one, include any page numbers, so I hope that you can follow me and we can keep on the same page. Uh, if we get lost, though, please raise your hand and <laughs> make sure that we get back on track. Um, because it is kind of early in the year, uh, as far as the, the results are, are concerned, um, if I... If I was going to present scores to the school district uh, or to the community with regard to how we compare to the state or to the region, I, um, I'm kind of put in a situation where, number one, I don't have regional scores yet uh, to be able to compare the district to. And then uh, secondly, the scores that are statewide uh, that have been released are for the first administration only and do not include the aggregate for the, the uh, retest for the fifth and eighth grade. So what I did is, as we start off this the presentation, is that I'm comparing and doing an apple-to-apple -apple comparison where I can compare the local uh, results to the state results. Uh, I am doing that. And so those first few slides that we're going to go through are just that. It's only the first administration. It is for those grade levels that, that, that are from three to eight. And, uh, and it is a comparison, a, a, a straight comparison between uh, the first administration at the state level with San Benito's administration, but it's not using the mobility or the accountability subset. It's just using all students that tested. Um, as you can see as, uh, on that first page, um, in every category, uh, when it comes to reading, uh, the uh, district underperformed when compared to the state. Uh, some of those uh, grade levels <laughs> Uh, show a significant under report, uh, underperformance, such as seventh grade, uh, where there's a 15 percentage point uh, performance uh, difference between the district and the state average. Um, also, at fourth grade is another one where there is a fairly significant 10 point difference. But I think the message here is that in every category, uh, in grades three to eight for English, I mean for reading. Uh, only the English students, because again, that's another situation where the state also separates the English from the Spanish. So we'll be looking at the Spanish separate from from the, uh, the English ones. So this is uh, certainly a concern. Uh, the district is looking at this. Uh, and if we turn the page, 
Uh, we can now see the uh, results for the Spanish administration for reading. Uh, Spanish is only provided in three to fifth grade or third to fifth grade. I did, not, as you can see, there's some very large uh, differences. Uh, up on your upper left hand corner of the page, I've put on there for each grade level the number tested versus the number that passed. Uh, and, and, and that's to let you know, for example, like at fifth grade, where there's a significant disparity between us and the state, um, we are talking about 17, uh, 19 students that were tested district wide, of which seven passed. So that left only 12 students. So although it says 37% passing, and it obviously is very low, uh, we are talking about 12 students in this case. And I know every student is important, but I do want to put it in perspective that in, in, in these situations where we have small numbers, the percentages will change drastically. If we turn the page to math now, uh, once again, we see that in every category uh, we underperformed as compared to the state. Um, certainly the seventh grade has uh, the, the most significant disparity between the performances. Uh, we turn the page and look at the Spanish math. Uh, once again, we see the same thing. Uh, we see at fifth grade the most significant differences between the, the local and the state. Uh, but again, I, I, I caution you to look at the upper left-hand corner where it does show that uh, we're talking about 11 students that did not pass. If you look at the next page for writing, uh, this is a, 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 you know, a very positive for the district. When we look at fourth grade writing results, we actually surpassed uh, the state average. Uh, they were at 73, uh, San Benito was at 75. So that's very encouraging. Uh, followed by the seventh grade where we're only seeing a five percentage uh, drop from what the state performance was. Uh, so that's also encouraging as well especially in lieu of seeing those previous uh, slides. Uh, looking at Spanish, which is, uh, was conducted at fourth grade, uh, once again, you know, it's a significant, well, not as, sig as significant as some of the other slides that we saw, but there is a, a six percentage point difference. And again, we're looking at uh, there were only 40 students that were tested in the Spanish. Now, if we look at the science results, uh, these were tested at fifth and eighth grade. Um, this is very, uh, very good to see that, that at fifth grade, the district was only one percentage point below the state average for science. Uh, and at eighth grade, uh, there were just two percentage points below the state average. So that's very encouraging. Uh, if we look at uh, the next page, fifth grade uh, Spanish science, uh, once again, we see a, a stark difference between the performance of the district versus the state. Uh, however, if you look at the upper left-hand corner, uh, you'll notice that uh, we're, we're looking at 10 students who did not pass. If we look at the next page for social studies, um, you'll notice that uh, this is only offered at eighth grade, uh, and there is a significant difference in, in our performance uh, as compared to the state. Uh, and certainly, these are numbers that are looked at internally, and. And of course, at a campus by campus level, they're looked at individually and, and much more detailed reports are run down to the student level to help campuses focus in on the deficiencies that are, that are present on that particular campus. If we turn the page now to <clears throat> the next one where there's a table, a large table on there, now we start looking at a comparison that's slightly different from the one I just presented. This one includes all types of STAR testing, the STAR, star L, uh, the star M, and the star ALT results. Um, it also includes the second administration. Uh, but as opposed to being able to compare to the state, which I can't at this point, I am comparing to last year's performance for each of those campuses on there as well as the district. However, let me draw your attention to the bottom of the slide. There have been some changes. So when you see some big discrepancies, such as you'll see at the high school for math, where there's the difference of 45 percentage points. Please note that whereas last year at the high school, uh, they tested for English one, two, and three, writing one, two, and three, that's a larger pool of students. This year, they only tested for English one and English two. And of the English one, 
Uh, those were the retesters that hadn't passed it when they moved up from ninth grade. So it's a dif very difficult comparison to make from one year to the next in that regard because it's not apple to apple. Uh, the same thing holds true for these other subject areas like Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Geometry were tested in the prior year. This year, only Algebra 1, so that's going to skew some of the numbers. Uh, U.S. History, World Geography, and World History were, were also taught, I mean, attested last year, uh, but this year only U.S. History was being tested. So once again, when you look at social studies uh, for, those, for the high school and veterans memorial and the district level, that, you please take that into consideration when you look at those numbers. Uh, and then, of course, you can see that uh, in the science area, there was biology and chemistry that was tested in, in uh, 2014 and uh, 2013, and only biology in 2013. And in writing, um, there was writing one and two last year, and this year, it was only writing was at fourth and seventh grade. The English reading test now incorporates the writing with it. So again, it is, even though you look at some of these numbers and you, and you see a difference, in some cases significant, if it's at the top end of this uh, report, um, keep in mind that footnote that I have at the bottom. When you get into the middle schools and elementary schools, that is more an apple to apple comparison because they didn't test any more uh, uh, subject areas this year than they did last year. So. That would be a fair comparison. So if you, um, you know, if you want to look for the negatives, then you look for any rows for any campus where it has, you know, uh, the worst they could do is have four successive uh, red numbers on there, which means that they dropped in every category from the year before. Uh, conversely, if you see nothing but black, uh, such as uh, I do want to point out, for example, uh, Rangerville, uh, here's a situation where they had very positive gains in every subject area, and I might add with a brand new principal in place as well. So, so that is a very positive. Um, now, everything that I've mentioned doesn't really relate directly to uh, the accountability system that the state will hold the district accountable for. Uh, there is an index system that is used. The next few pages, and I won't go over each one of them uh, in detail, but please notice that between last year and this year, there are significant changes in how those indexes uh, uh, are, are, are used. Uh, specifically, the targets have changed where they did give us a target number, but also what is included uh, has also expanded to incorporate either more subjects, more population types, um, and, and that, of course, will mean that the indexes will change. So you can go through the next few pages on your own if you'd like. Uh, and we'll get to the next graph or the next chart. That's the one that says uh, projections with second administration. This is where I do my best to try to project what those index values will be where I can. Uh, and at the very top of that graph or that uh, table, you're going to see what, where there is a target already established by TEA for this year, such as, for example, index one. Last year for every area, uh, the target was 50. Uh, this year they raised that target to 55. Now this is directly related to the performance that we were discussing a while ago. So if you look at what the index values that we've computed as a projection uh, are under the column of 2014, if you see any, any campus or even the school district below the 55, then that would probably be a, a campus that we need to be concerned with, that they may not meet the, the, uh, the standard that the state has set. Uh, as you can already see on that first uh, column under index one for 2014, we do have one campus um, that is in jeopardy of, of not meeting the standard. As we move across the page, um, for the index two, please notice that I have NAs for what the value or the target number is for this year because they have not set that. This is based on a, on a five, you have to be in the fifth percentile and above to not be subjected to, to uh, being sanctioned under this index. Since the state has to evaluate the whole 
state results before they can then align them by uh, district, by high school type, middle school type, and elementary type to come up with the where do we set the 5% the, the, the value at. Uh, since they haven't done that, we can't speculate that it's the same as it was the year before, which I show you on there that there are some target values for index two from last year. But I would caution you to say, well, if they passed it last year, let's say with uh, SBVMA with 25, well then this year they're sitting there at 35, they must be doing a lot better. It's gonna be a different target value. So I can't project what that's gonna be. But I can say that overall I feel very comfortable that based on the changes that I see that none of the campuses or the district is in jeopardy of not meeting index two. Again, that's a projection on my part. The same thing goes with index three. There have been a number of changes that you can see in the previous pages uh, as it compares to 2013. And once again, this one kind of scares you at looking at it at first glance because you see big changes from one year to the next year. And, and I mean, they went down. But they also went down because of the inclusion of a lot more tests, uh, you know, the star alts, the star, star Ms, additional population groups that previously were excluded are not going to be included. So when the state recalculates the percentile to find out where to place that fifth percentile, uh, it's going to be set at a lower number than it was last year. And so I wouldn't panic at this point when you see something like this. It's just that the that, that the indicators are changing themselves and until we can see it. And I wish we had it you know, already, but the state won't release the preliminary results, by the way, till August 1st. So that's still a little ways off. Um, but I, again, I don't believe that the district is gonna have any issues with index three as well. Um, and then the last index, index four, uh, they previously did not have that measure for middle schools and elementary schools. Uh, and for the district and the, uh, and the ninth to 12th grade uh, level, it was set at 75. Uh, for this year, they have already established what those are gonna be. For the district, you need to meet 57. Uh, for uh, the high school, it'll be 57. For the veterans, it'll be 21. And then for the middle schools, it'll be 13. And the elementaries, it'll be 12. And of all those that are listed on there, the ones that were more, more solid in our projections are the middle schools and elementary schools because we pretty much have all the data that's gonna be used for creating that, that index. And the only concern I have is that one campus that has a 13. Uh, it's an elementary school. It's a different school than the other one that is marked in red. Uh, and if there's any, you know, if we're off by two percentage points in the calculation that we're doing locally, um, then that could potentially be another campus that did not meet the standard. Uh, hopefully the calculations are, are, are accurate and, and you know, we'll still just remain with one, but, but that is just, I'm, I'm pointing that out, that that's a, a possibility as well. Uh, the middle the uh, high school, VMA, and the district, you might notice that you know, they're, they're, they're at 36, 46, 46, yet the number that they need to attain are either 21 or 57. I caution you there to also not read that much into it at this point, and the reason for that is because it is still missing uh, uh, certain information, such as graduation rates, uh, dropout rates, uh, performance uh, for college readiness rates that have not been factored into this, this number that I have that's on here. So I've, I foresee those numbers are gonna increase considerably, and, and again, I don't believe we're gonna have issues with index four with any campus other than that one that's awfully, awfully close, uh, that elementary school. So if you turn the page to the last page, uh, in essence, this is what I'm projecting for this coming school year. This is the most uncomfortable I've ever felt making a projection because there's so many variables that are still not uh, solid. And so it makes the, uh, it's kind of like forecasting weather. Three days you feel comfortable, but 10 days out you feel very uncomfortable. This is like a 10 day weather projection. And I'm saying that the district will meet standard, uh, but we may have one campus that will not be meeting the standard. Um, that, that's it for the presentation. I'm open to any questions you might have. I do have a, a question and a comment. Um, 
just so that the community is aware, we did have a curriculum meeting, and I did uh, specifically ask Ms. Sanchez that she put something together to present to the board, something with preliminary results, simply so that we can start looking ahead. Um, we can't settle for just accepting these scores and just letting them sit there or just throw them over to the wayside. So um, with that, I did ask that that something be presented to us as far as um, what the intervention plan is going to be, how we expect to move forward from this, you know, um, in order to exceed or meet or exceed what the state standard is and achieve academic excellence for all our students, not just the lower grades or the middle grades or the upper grades. Um, that was the intent of this whole presentation. Um, but also, I'd like to ask um, a question on this spreadsheet. Yes. The one with the black and red numbers. Mm -hmm. I know that on there it has all the campuses, and you give us the, the percentages from 2013 compared to the 2014. Correct. And I know, like I said, these are just preliminary numbers, but have you already filtered out the, the non-snapshot kids, or is this if all students? This particular one is the, the, the mobility factored in already, the, they're the snapshot kids on this particular report. Um, of course, we, we do it internally with all students because we obviously need to impact all students. Uh, but for this particular report, it is an apple to apple with regard to the snapshot data. Okay, so that's already more a more accurate It is with the, with the caveat that I said earlier where when we look at the high school and VMA, <coughs> there's a difference between the prior year subjects that were tested versus what was tested this year. Um, and then that, of course, I indicated at the bottom how many different tests are no longer being tested. Uh, for example, even English 1 at the high school, when that's being tested now, that's only the, the, the students that, that did not pass it at, at, uh, at uh, ninth grade who are now 10th graders. So that group is going to be smaller, and their chance of scoring very high scores is, is, is slimmer. Uh, but unfortunately, that's still going to get factored in to this equation. So, you know, you need to just keep that in mind when you look at these numbers. to put together and, and I understand there's a lot of variables and as you mentioned there's some reports and some uh, some information still lacking from from the TA as far as the test for scores and how, how the how your your percentages are formulated but mm -hmm. I would ask that maybe as you as we get into the summer months and you start receiving some additional information you get a better understanding of truly where the district is that we may have a special session or maybe even a workshop with, with the trustees to, to get a feel of what your intentions are and what, what uh, corrective measures are being formulated mm -hmm. so that we can at least get a true picture of where we were at the end and what we are doing to resolve our, our problems. Mm -hmm. I mean, any score that's below the par is, is not acceptable. Right. And, and especially when we look at the issue of, on the Spanish aspect that we have a, a small pool so it affects the end percentage. Irrelevant, it becomes an issue of all students should be right. approached and all students be, be reached, which also goes back to, uh, and I know Mr. Mendez had asked for a copy of what the, the star scores were per campus, per teachers, just so we could take a look at it and maybe just get an idea of, of what this looks like globally. Mm -hmm. We understand that that's just one component uh, amongst many as you've, as you've illustrated. Yeah. Uh, but it does give us an opportunity to see the perspective of when uh, when we look at budgetary issues and when we look at curriculum requests and all that, we have, we have a, f a full understanding of, of where we may be failing and where we may have to undertake specific corrective actions to, to, uh, to get there. So, so I know that Mr. Mendes had brought it to my, my attention that, that he had requested, so I would only ask that uh, if we can, if we get that information uh, again, and then uh, maybe we'll look at over the next uh, six to eight weeks when you start getting some some of the numbers that you're lacking, and come back and revisit this, and maybe in a in a more relaxed atmosphere, a workshop opportunity to really have some dialogue going back and forth between the trustees and how you formulate these scores. Outside of that, of course, I commend you for preparing. I know it's a difficult document, and we understand that we try to rush you through these, 
but uh, we yeah. appreciate this. Uh, and you know, I just want you to please understand, also the community to understand, that what's being presented here is, is just a very summary uh, of, or a snapshot of what actually is being disaggregated district-wide. Mm -hmm. uh, at the campus level, a lot of this, these disaggregations go down to, this, to the teacher level. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know that principals use it to see how which teachers are having more success than others. But more importantly, they, they look at the, the individual students to see how they're performing by the various objectives that they need to, 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 to meet, the TEKS. And so they are then tailored with some kind of a, an acceleration program or, uh, or an IEP for the following year that targets those deficiencies. So that kind of activity goes on at the campus level. And, and so I, I, don't, I don't want you to think that, that because we are still missing more data that that hasn't already occurred. It is still, it's occurring as, it, as we get this data because we can disaggregate down to that level and, and we do. Uh, and so certainly the, the principals are doing that. And uh, as we move into the year, staff development is, is, uh, is, is definitely um, impacted by the needs that come from this uh, research that they, they look at in the data. So, you know, a, a lot of things do happen, Mr. Padilla. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank yes. you. And, and just to add to that, thank you, Mr. Franco, for an excellent report. Uh, I used to be able to, by the end of the year in May, all the principals would turn into me a detailed list of the teachers and how each of them had scored, not only this year, but up to the last three or four years. And we had a comparison of, you know, how they did two years ago, you know, one year ago, and we could look and detail it all. And this is certainly a practice that, that we'll get back to so that the board can see that. I used to give the board copies of that so you could take them home and review them and see every campus with every teacher and how they did. And I think that's what you're looking for. And we'll, we'll give us a little time and we'll get it for you. Uh, Mr. Yeah. One more thing, Mr. Badia. Uh, I just handed out one piece of information that I did neglect to do in, in my haste, haste to get this report put together, and that is the EOC results. Uh, you know, the, you can see that how we can compare in that regard uh, the district to the state. Uh, as you can see, that there's some some differences once again. Uh, in, in every category, we're below the state, but I would point out that in three of those five uh, subject areas, we're very comparable to the state. Uh, and uh, the other two areas are, are, are not as big of a gap as we saw in some of the other grade levels. Uh, so when it comes to EOCs, uh, we are having a much more successful time in meeting the standards. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Frank. Yes, I, I just like to say that uh academics so um, I really look forward to you know working with all the board members and really targeting all the deficiencies in student expectations and also uh, providing respond to intervention for all our students that need it Anna, uh, one thing that I'd like to echo on uh, Anna's comments is, is we, we need to also be um, taking into consideration that we need to surpass the state levels not just meet standards and I think that's very important for us to, uh, to really take uh, uh, very serious and begin those initiatives in that, in that direction. Thank you. Thank you. Continuing with the superintendent's report, we have the emergency uh, medical technician education program application. San Benito CISD has submitted an application to the Texas Department of State Health Services for the acceptance of the emergency medical technician education program, an on-site training center. The acceptance of the Emergency Medical Technician Education Program will allow for San Benito High School students in the Emergency Medical Technician Program to receive instruction and training directly from San Benito CISD. San Benito CISD had been contracting from outside the district for this program. San Benito CISD currently has San Benito High School teacher Jaime Ibarra conducting instruction for the Emergency Medical Technician Program. The application to the state of uh, Department of State Health Services upon approval would be valid for three years before renewal is required. We also have disbursements and disbursements by organization. That concludes the uh, superintendent's report. Any questions? I know that um, Ms. Cruz earlier mentioned that we're um, trying to be more academic driven, uh, which with that it entails accountability and fiscal responsibility. 
And I was looking at the disbursements, Mr. Limon, and I have a couple of areas that, that are questionable. Um, with regards to, um, there was an overwhelming amount of interventionists and consultants that were on there. And so my question, first and foremost, is how do we define or make a distinction between an interventionist and a consultant? Uh, I've only been back for about three or four days, so uh, give me some time and I'll get back to you. Is, can Ms., um, is Ms. Sanchez able to answer that? Yes, ma'am. And you requested that all the information that you requested at the special board meeting is I am currently already sitting on my desk. I'm putting it together and you will be getting it this Thursday. But principals hire interventionists during the, during the year and it's, an, it's a person that they keep all, all year long. They're there all day and they work with students in small groups or they work in, in the classroom with the teachers. Consultants, when they hire consultants, those are um, people that they hire to come in and do training. So they're called consultants, they're not interventionists because they're not there to work with children. Consultants are people that they hire for, um, for uh, staff development training or for an after school training. Okay, okay so my question, um, again, goes back to the interventionists and the number of consultants that we have listed on those disbursements. Um, seeing the results, of course, um, I know the STARS is just, and the EOCs is just one measure of performance, but seeing you know, the fact that we have so many interventionists and so many consultants, um, I'd like to see if you could provide us a list yes, of all the interventionists. I, yes, and you asked for that list, mm -hmm. and I, by campus, and it's sitting on my desk, you'll be getting it Thursday, I need to submit to the superintendent so that he can review it and then send it to you all. And on there, does it have, does it specify the costs associated with each? Yes. Okay, and is there, uh, that you might recall, is there any that are doing both consultant and interventionist? Because I ran across one that was doing both. That's that's the reason why I ask, how do we distinguish? I, I asked the campus, I, the campus has submitted them by interventionist, tutors, and consultants. Right, and there was a, one particular name that had both both, um, I, have, I haven't come across that one from my campus, yeah. but if you'll let me know, I'll certainly. Okay, um, so I, I'll, I'll go ahead and get with you on that one because it is kind of questionable that there's so many interventionists and um, let you speak for themselves. Um, on a different note, <clears throat> on the election, um, the clerks, the judges, the alternate judges, Emma, I think this question might be directed more towards you. But there's, um, they're all listed there individually. So my question is, why is there a variance in the compensation? The judges get paid a different rate. <clears throat> they also get paid a, a flat amount for uh, bringing the records back to the office. Some of the places were able to bring the stuff back very quickly. You know, shortly after 7 o'clock, they're done. Some of the larger precincts, it'll take them maybe till 8, 8.15 to get done. So it's based on an hourly rate. Yeah, because I noticed that there was um, quite a variance on there, and, and it's assumed that most of them worked on average 7 to 7. So that's why I was questioning, you that know, from one judge to the other. Right, because they, they, they have to be there before 7 a.m., and they finished after 7. But they all get the the same rate except for the judges get a, a slightly higher rate. Okay. If I could, Ms. Gonzalez, and I appreciate the questions being posed. And I'm wondering if this isn't something that we should approach at in a finance committee meeting, especially if you're if you are uh, putting together a report on the financial cost and the um, and the uh, the amount of contractors we may have had. And I do believe that we may be trying to schedule another finance committee early part next week. Uh, this would be an opportunity to really maybe take a true closer look at this and give Ms. McCall and Ms. Sanchez an opportunity to formulate something that, that would be a little bit more informative. Because I, I do agree that these, these are concerns that we do need to pose and we need to really look at, especially if we're going into a budget uh, set up uh, pretty soon, we need to have a good idea of where we're spending our funds at. Mr. Limon, um, being that I still have quite a bit of questions with regards to the disbursements, I have a, a whole page of questions. Um, and it could take us into the late hours. Um, I wanted to ask, 
Because you're presenting it now, if we approve it, does that mean that we turn around and um, fulfill those, those compensations to those individuals? Or the fact that we're going to have a workshop, does that kind of push it back later? How's that going to work? Ma'am, if it's on the disbursement report, it's already been compensated. So that, that's already, we can go back and look and correct it if you think there's an error there. But by the time you get the disbursement report, that's already been done. Okay, no, okay. My, my question with regards to this then is the fact that there's, I think there's expenses on there that maybe we could have avoided. Um, take for example, and I'm not sure if I can mention names, but I'll go ahead and mention um, initials. We have uh, under the GT, we have a GT consultant um, initials ER where we paid them as a consultant versus what we paid out to Region 1 for the training. So my question is, if we have GT directors, why are we paying outside consultants that have nothing to do with training? Again, uh, Ms. Gonzalez, if you give me time to review it, I can have answers for you. These are things that happened before my time. So I'll be glad to review them and, and meet with you and, and give you all the answers that you need. But I just can't do it now. Okay. If, if, I, uh, if I could add it, and I know you, you, so you have a long list of questions mm -hmm. on disbursements. Maybe you should go ahead and formulate those, hand them over to Ms. Limon. Uh, not excusing Ms. Limon, but I do understand that he just got back. But these questions are legitimate issues that we need to look at. And it goes back to, again, if we're going to have a finance committee meeting, there would be probably a better opportunity to truly look and segregate every item that you have a concern with to understand why those expenses were approved, when were they approved, uh, who signed off on them, and were they even budget items to begin with. So right. I, I think that'd be the best form, and I think for, for the sake of moving this meeting along, it would be best maybe we go ahead and, uh, and forward your list to, to Mr. Lemoy so we can truly take a look at it. If you would, please, or email it to me, or we'll be glad to answer them. Move item number seven, recommend and approving the agenda of the regular board meeting of June 10th, 2014, so with any corrections or deletions. There's a mo motion on the floor by Mr. Medrano. Second. Second by Mr. Leal. All those in favor, state by saying aye. Aye. Those against, no. Motion passes. Next item we have is public comment. We do have one registry. Under the, the undersigned wishes to address the Samuel Consolidated School District trustees and by his or her signature shows onto the board that he or she understands the following provisions to addressing the board. The person wishing to address the board shall register with the presiding officer or designee no later than five minutes before the announced time of the school board meeting, shall state their full name, shall, shall state what organization or group, if any, is being represented, shall state the topics they wish to address before the school board, shall refrain from commenting directly on any individual school district employee or public official by name but may instead refer to specific employment areas, job titles, or the Board of Trustees as a whole, shall refrain from attacks on individuals. The person wishing to address the Board of Trustees should do, should do so in accordance with the following San Antonio Consolidated Into School District Board policy. The speaker shall be allowed only five minutes to give his or her presentation. Delegations of more than five persons shall appoint one person to, pres to present their views before the Board of Trustees. Presentations shall be informative and shall pertain to school-related issues. Any attack on an individual shall be considered disruption of the meeting. The Board Trustees shall not deliberate, deliberate or decide regarding any subject that is not included on the agenda posted with notice of this meeting. We do have Mr. Andy Bonner. Hi, good afternoon, Mr. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the board, my name is Andy Bonner. I'm the president of Healthcare to You, one of the bidders in the on-site clinic uh, bid that apparently is going to be on the board for approval tonight. Um, I'm a lifelong, grew up here in the valley in Harlingen, Texas. Um, I'm not a foreigner. <laughs> I went to Marine Military Academy. My father's buried out just east of here. My mom is a city commissioner in Harlingen, Texas. I have deep roots in the valley. And I'm very concerned about the processes that led into the, the bid process not only this time, but also the last time, which I was a part of and was also the low bidder the last time. Um, the last time I waited until after the bid to look at the bid sheets. 
Uh, I saw some irregularities in the bid sheets. I brought them up to uh, the business manager and the uh, purchasing director. Um, they didn't understand who made the, the, uh, the additional uh, comments and subtractions on the bid sheets, on the evaluation sheets, and it was left at that, and that was the end of it. Uh, so I came back this time, and I decided I was going to bid again. And I believe I have given the best bid, and from all intents, everything that I've heard, uh, I do have the lowest bid uh, for the on-site clinic. And I'd like to explain to you some of the things that have happened through the bid process, because I, I believe it would be a concern of yours as well. I was first notified by an anonymous insider uh, here at San Benito of uh, some events that were taking place. This, this insider's email address was called the truth956 at yahoo.com. I received an email on June 2nd of 2014 at 1057 a.m. in the morning. I immediately after received that email called uh, the business manager, called the uh, purchasing director. Uh, both those individuals said they couldn't talk to me, which is understandable. We're in a bed process. So then I went directly to uh, Dr. Cantu with the, with the issue. Uh, Dr. Cantu did call me back. Uh, I expressed to him what I was, uh, was given, which is basically an insider telling me that, that the, the bid evaluation process was not followed appropriately, that there was a gentleman on the bid process on the evaluation team by the name of William Rusterberg or Bill Rusterberg, who is a licensed agent uh, for Valley Baptist Insurance. Uh, they provided me with a Texas Department of Insurance uh, website uh, to validate it. I did not take their information as truth. I actually went to the website myself to validate it before I brought it up as a concern uh, to the school district. I sent an email to uh, Dr. Cantu, um, again, to just let him be aware um, and told him to, to please look at this in fairness for all the bidders. And I do have a copy of this, and I have a copy of this whole package for all the uh, all the folks here, if y'all would like a copy of it. Would you like a copy? Okay. Am I still on the clock while they're passing it out? <laughs> Sorry, here's an extra one if you need it. So I actually have them uh, busted in, or actually have them organized into two sections. The first section is the actual email that I sent to Dr. Cantu. And as you can see, I'm only sharing this uh, with the Dr. Cantu too, so he can investigate it prior to the finance committee meeting that was going to happen that evening. Um, he told me he was very concerned about it uh, and that he would, uh, he would um, address it in the finance committee meeting. My understanding, though, if you look on the second page, there's the agent profile, which is William Rusterberg. On the third page, it says appointments. And on the very last page of that section, you will see Valley Baptist Insurance Company, effective as of 419 of 2006. So if William Rusterberg was on the evaluation committee, that is a clear conflict of interest uh, that is taking place there. Okay? And I would hope that that would be dealt with effectively. So moving on to the second piece, which is why I believe um, what we're all here about is to try to provide the best service at the least cost to the employees and, the, and, and, the, um, uh, and their dependents. Um, very early on in the bid process, you all sent down an addendum. This addendum states on the very bottom that you would like, due to the high satisfaction of the current staff, it would be advantageous to SBCISD to retain the staff if contractually possible. In other words, what you did as you stated to the vendors exactly who you wanted us to staff that center with. You gave us two models, and you gave us the description, the education level, um, and what designations they should have for us to bid upon, okay? I, in my bid, did say that I would retain the individuals in the current bid process, and will hire those individuals if I am a successful bidder. And my point is, is that anybody who's doing that we're all going to be in the same scenario. We're all going to have the very same staffing, okay? You're, you're out of time, Mr. Bonner. Is my out of time? Yes, sir. I apologize. Uh, okay. Well, please review the package. Uh, I think I justify in there why I think that I should be the winning bidder, uh, and I think you will see it makes a whole lot of sense.
move to item number nine. In order to promote efficient meetings, the board may act upon more than one item by a single vote through the use of consent agenda. Consent items placed on the agenda shall be marked with an asterisk. Consent items for which no board discussion is anticipated and for which the superintendent recommends approval. Prior to the time for which approval of consent item is had at the request of any board member or to trustees, any item on the consent agenda shall be removed and given individual consideration. 1406A1, request for approval for children nutrition program to apply for community eligibility program sponsored by the United States Department of Agriculture. 1406A2, request for approval of proposal on student health Athlete, student athletic insurance. 1406A3, request for approval of proposal on on site primary health care clinic. 1406A4, request for approval of renewal proposal on property casualty insurance with TASB. 1406A5, request for approval to exercise option for renewal of workers' compensation insurance with TASB. 1406A6, request for authorization to request proposals for a third party administrator for employee group health benefits. Question. Question. 1406A7, request for authorization to request proposal for the cafeteria benefit plan, IRC section 125, to include all ancillary voluntary plans. 1406A8, request for approved funding of HVAC summer project upgrades. Question. 1406A9, request for approval of signature cards resolution for Samuel Consolidated and School District Bank accounts for Frost Bank National Bank. 1406A10, request of approval of 2013-2014 budget amendments. 1406A11, request for approval of budget transfers. 1406A12, request for approval to enter into a memorandum of understanding with TSTC Harlingen and the Challenger Learning Center of the Rio Grande Valley for the 2014-2015 school year. Question. Under administration, 1406A13, request for approval of board minutes. May I have a motion on all those not questioned? So moved. There's a motion, second. All those in favor, state by saying aye. Aye. We'll go to 1406A6. Uh, before I ask the question, I am going to ask that this time item be tabled. Um, and I also will ask that this item be tabled with, with a request that the providers of the current health policy, in this particular case, assured benefit administrators, present to this district and to these trustees a concise, report on the managed care plan to this district uh, at the next finance committee meeting, which I would also ask that our chair host one this coming Monday. Uh, but I do believe that it is important for this district to know exactly where it is financially in its managed care plan to then make an informed decision on placing this item back on. Uh, it is possible we'll have a meeting on the, third, on the 17th and the item may be back on the agenda, but it'll give us an opportunity to get a full and detailed report from the service provider because my understanding is we've not had one detailed report that indicates exactly where we are financially. And uh, we need that uh, true to this date. So I ask that that item be tabled. It requires, yes. I second. I second. Well, okay. Actually make a motion. Motion by Oscar. Second. Second, uh, uh, motion by Mr. Leal, second by Ms. Medrano. All those in favor, state by saying aye. Aye. Item tabled. We do have a question on 1406A7. Okay, so I had questions um, and I wanted to kind of, the questions that I have primarily pertain to those two items, 1406A-6 and A-7. Um, and my questions, or once again to hear if there's any complaints or concerns um, that would that would also apply to 1406A-6 so I would like to because the same questions apply for the most part I would ask that I, that uh, item be tabled as well 
There's a request for tabling. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to table it. Okay, so moved by Mr. Liad, second by Ileana. All those in favor, state by saying aye. Aye. Items table also. Question on 1406A8. Um, I've got a question on this. I understand that we had discussed this in the Finance Committee meeting. I do believe that we did get a presentation on some of the, uh, I apologize, my iPad's not, not working. Did have some questions on the, um, the, uh, the amount of estimated repairs that, that were, that were uh, proposed. Now, I think we'd ask that we take a, a, a detailed look at just exactly how many components and what the, where those components were going to be. I understand that, uh, Mr. Montes, you did prepare an item, uh, but the question I do have is, is your request is uh, intensive, yes. fairly heavy. One of the questions I asked is, McCall, is, is there room to adjust the budget for such a large demand at this time, specifically when we're not ready to move forward with the 14-15 budget? Usually during the year, <clears throat> when we come to this point, I usually know where I can find, you know, some substantial amounts of money that we can use for his summer projects. This year, we I haven't combed through it to see if we can find all of that. And the, the big difference that we know we're going to be facing this year will be that we have, we know that we're going in, in the red on our health insurance plan. And so, you know, I know I'm going to have an amendment before the end of the year for that. Um, I can find money for it, but, you know, we, we will have some other extenuating circumstances. Now, I think what he's going to show you mm -hmm. is we have been saving money, you know, over the years because he has, you know, the, the projects basically do pay for themselves. And so that's, you know, where it might make sense to go ahead with, you know, some, if not all of what he's proposed for this summer, because usually we do get our money, you know, does come back to us in the, in the result of the savings. And I agree, I agree that uh, these, these changes are, are uh, good cost measures for saving in the electricity cost. And I understand this district at one point was considering an EPC and, and frankly, uh, a district can manage its own EPC in this format. And, and I appreciate that the, the value of your request is more of my concern, not necessarily that these projects are not needed by the district. Uh, no doubt they're identified, uh, but before we, you know, we didn't get a recommendation, we didn't really know where we are going to get the money, and that was my qu simple question is, uh, a request this large, uh, we need to be assure ourselves that we can sustain this in our budget. And uh, The answer would be I can probably find most of that money. And I just want you to be aware that, you know, we will have an amendment, you know, that will take us probably into the red on the, uh, you know, going the wrong direction for our health insurance because the costs have, you know, greatly exceeded what was projected on that. So I can find the money for this, but well, we'll be facing more on some other areas. I, I would hate to approve something not knowing where the money's coming from and, and how you're going to cover it. And, I, and, I, and with all due respect, Ms. Montes, again, I understand what your requests are, and I can see that they're, they're, they're truly needed. Um, I was going to suggest, if you let me, no, I was going to suggest that maybe instead of uh, approving the whole amount, just make money available to me as, as, as it is found, mm -hmm. and I can do the projects in increments okay. uh, as money becomes available. Okay. What has happened in the past, Mr. President, is let's say $400,000. Well, at the end of the year, we're going to pay those $400,000, whether it's in energy or some way. Mm -hmm. By doing this, we get the $400,000 up front, and, and we get them from the savings. And, and the longer we prolong it, the longer we're going to be paying those 400000 even though we say we won't feel it because it's in the budget, but it's still going to be spent. And I think Mr. Montes has a proven track record that he's saved us energy every year that he's done improvements on the system, has come back with substantial savings on our energy costs. 
So I don't see why this would be any any different. But I agree, with Mr. Montes, if we can, you know, bring it down and do it. I know you labeled them priority one there for the ones that you wanted to do, but it's of those year. ones, you could do, you know, maybe half of those ones. And it's still. a three-year uh, plan, you know. Uh, so it's, it's up to the to the board. <laughs> I would just want to make an assurance that that Ms. McCall is okay with. Uh, Finding the money for it. If we can find the money, I, I'm 100% I'm behind the issue. But we need to do it. But uh, $527,000 is a lot and, of money. And you know, on something like this, it's not not like salaries, which you're going to have that every year. This is, you know, every year we just pick a project and and we take care of it, and it does save us money in the long run. And uh, you know, it's money up front, but then it it comes back to us the next year. Well, answer, I guess, my Mr. Chairman, I guess uh, the finding the money is a question. I mean, where, where are we going to cut or how, when you say find, I'll find the money? Okay, this, where, time, where? Of, this time of year, I, I, I can usually look through the budget and I can find areas where, for instance, I budget health insurance for everybody, but there's some people that decline health insurance. So I have some funds in that, that area. And, uh, you know, sometimes there's, areas where maybe we budgeted for substitute teachers and we don't need all that those funds. So I'll be looking at, at all of those type of areas and I won't go above what I can find. Mm -hmm. Right. And maybe the, the best way to approach an item like this is that it be visited with the business manager and it correlates with what funds are available and, and we already know ahead of time what is it that you can afford and not come well, you know, we want this, this, you know, 800,000 or a million or whatever it may be, and then look over and say, well, how much can we afford? I think this, the effort should be, let's get together, finance department, your department, mm -hmm. truly understand how much money she, she may be able to pull back out of the system, and then you budget around that so that that way we are, we're, we're well prepared before we come to the table. I, I think that would be the best way to do that. So may that, I uh, recommend we table this also? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. It, is there a... A project that needs to be done this summer, maybe. maybe the I mean, ones that it, there on the okay. okay. And maybe we can table this again to next week. I don't think a week's going to hurt you. No, no, no. no? Okay. <laughs> maybe I think what we can do is table this for the week. We plan to have a meeting next Tuesday. Uh, you can sit with Miss McCall and you can determine just exactly how much money you can find, where you're going to find it from, and assure that it's not going to hurt a budget anywhere else. And if she can come up with a 527,000, great. If she comes up with even more than that better for you but I think I that, but, <laughs> but 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 in the end I, I understand that these projects are needed and yes there's a cost savings in the end we do earn the money back but you also can't spend all the bucket of money if yes. you don't have it yes okay thank right. you thank you second motion second to all those in favor state by saying aye aye motion taken last question is four 1406A12, request for approval to enter into memorandum of understanding with the TSTC Harlingen and the Challenger Learning Center for the Rio Grande Valley for the 2014-15 school year. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I had a question on, on the cost of this. Uh, what was the total cost? Of uh, Ms. Sanchez, do you remember the total cost for the Challenger? 40000 Okay, when the Challenger was here in San Benito uh, and we were sending the schools or the classes or how many trips did they make, and did did it total to forty-two thousand? We some years it did, some years it didn't. Uh, how many years uh, did we have results. it? About five years. However, on this one, we figured out that it's going to take a hundred missions for us to uh, to um, justify the forty thousand, and so we are scheduling a hundred missions in a year. Yes. Sir. And you think we can do that? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes, my my concern is, you know, if we're going to spend $40,000 plus uh, dollars on that. I, I hope it's uh, utilized, you know, because, I mean, if they're just going to take one trip every month, you know, I don't no, no, think no. it's. They've now added for all the way to high school. They've now added the physics and the chemistry uh, teaks. So we're going to we're going to schedule 100 missions. May I interject? I, I took the liberty to go out there to uh, TSTC, and uh, I was a little skeptical. <laughs> but uh, 
as as I went through the uh, through the through the program, it, it shows some great potential. Not only that, uh, Mr. Trevino is that his name, Trevino. Yes, Trevino. He also mentioned that uh, there is also teacher professional development there. That is, I'm, I'm assuming that it's part of the contract. Yes. So in essence, if we could take advantage of that completely, I think we could surpass the forty thousand dollars. I think if you see the correlation of all the science teachers, elementary, middle school, and all the way to high school to, to physics, you're going to see that it, it's, a, it's a good investment. Any additional questions? This time I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Says so motion on the floor. Second? Second. 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 It's a motion and a second. All those in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Next on the item of the agenda is closed session, discussion under authority of Texas Government Code 551.071 for the purpose of private consultation with the board attorney on any subject or matters authorized by law. 551.074 for the purpose of appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee to hear complaints or charges against a public officer or employee. A, report on personnel. B, renewal of contracts, employment, resignations, and retirement. C, request for approval to rescind pr proposed notice of termination of term contracts and approval of resignation agreements. We go into a closed session at 828. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this should have been covered right after Mr. Franco's presentation in the superintendent's report. This is a, a memo that I received. It says, attached you will find the 2014 LEA determination report for San Benito CISD Special Education Department in reference to the State Performance Plan and Annual Performance Report. San Benito CISD Special Education Department met 100% compliance. Therefore, TEA had 2014 LEA determination status of meets requirements. The department met requirements at 100% for SSP9, which is disproportionately in the special education program, disproportionality by special disabilities 100%, child fine 100%, early childhood transition 100%, secondary transition 100%, and post-school outcomes 100%. So congratulations to our special ed department for 100% compliance. Good news. All right, we'll move on to item number uh, A out of item 10. Action on items discussed in closed session if if necessary, I'll ask for a motion to approve items B and C as presented by superintendent. So move. Second. There's, an, there's a motion and second. All those in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Those against? All those motion passes. Uh, next item is item 11, adjournment. So move. Second. All those in favor, state by saying aye. aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.